Hi there, my name is Immanuel Kahn from the Thoughtful Gaming Channel and we are going to talk about the mega corporations, the corporate authority, the ethics and all the civics and what they will mean for your game. And so the Megacorps DLC is coming and among other things this is the main addition. You have a new way to play. You have new civics, you have a free choice of ethics, but not totally free. There are some of the civics that are limited by the ethics, and then there are some choices of the civics that basically limit or expand your playstyle. That definitely changed the corporate identity even more. It's similar to like if you choose hive mind and if you choose a devouring swarm you will have totally different choices then so let's go back to the corporate authority so first we have brand loyalty here that's the, your go-to civic if you want to have a quick unity game it's nothing special but it's good it's good then we have franchising and criminal heritage these two are going well together and Criminal Heritage is one of these game-changing ethics. So, uh, your mega corporation cannot form commercial pacts anymore, but gets something that will offset that, and even more. It cannot also join federations. It can build branch offices on the plan of any regular empire they have no war or active truce with. Normally, you need a commercial pact with an empire, so a positive relation and uh, some kind of effort to build branch offices there. The criminal heritage mega corporation can't do it just like that if they had have or had no war with another empire. But they cannot join federations. Of course, they are not uh, seen uncritical. They are dangerous. Also. And this is why the crime on the branch office planets will increase the branch office value. There's a new value called crime. It decreases all kinds of all kinds of things among them stability, and your criminal heritage mega corporation lives off that crime, partly because the crime on the branch office planets increases branch office value. So we are getting more income through that, mostly energy income and you can build special crime increasing corporate buildings so when the planet where you have the branch office grows in population you would typically choose like the the main planet the capital planet of another empire then you can unlock more and more crime increasing corporate buildings which is leads to two things first you have a lot of income through that Second, the empire affected is going to have big problems on their capital planet or on a very big planet they have. There's a lot of uh, population and a lot of crime suddenly. So it's both a way of getting a lot of income and also damaging your opponents. Well, <laughs> you have to damage your opponents very early on because if you have war with them or an active truce with them then you cannot build anything anymore on these planets but bef like before you can build that and after that they will not get rid of these branch offices easily so there's that criminal heritage is a powerful civic definitely it goes well with that's why i mentioned it franchising why because the impact of branch offices on your empire size goes down by 25 percent by branch offices that's that's the big part of it like you can play basically a branch office expansion game with franchising much easier and there's another effect to it. The effect of subsidiary subject power on relations is reduced by 33%. So if your subsidiary, a subsidiary is a special kind of vessel for the mega corporation that increases your income. They, they give you 25% of their income and the effects of their power on relations is reduced by 33%. 30, so you can have very poor 
relatively more powerful subjects than a normal mega corporation without having any problems. So that's definitely a very good thing. Especially if you want to win the game the old fashioned way. There's now the possibility to win by score, like in two, three hundred years, however you adjust that. But if you want the old fashioned way, then franchising maybe is a good bet, at least later on. So there are some civics that are good later on, and there are some civics that are good earlier. Criminal heritage you have to choose right now or never. And the others you can exchange. Let's have a look. There's free traders. That increases trade value and branch office value. That's just the go-to civic. It's a little boring, but it will help a lot of civics become even better. Then we have the media conglomerate. That is made basically for war and for a general happiness bonus. So the war exhaustion gain will go down by 5% and citizen pop happiness will go up by 5%. There is definitely synergy there, so with a media conglomerate you can later choose one of these civics down here. As you can see here, the naval contractors or the private military companies, and then you will have a warlike media conglomerate. That's one of the types that will, will come up here. Maybe, basically you make war and... <laughs> you send out the news of war and make profit from that. That's maybe the idea of that. And you also have the propaganda uh, that will come with that. Then you have private prospectus. That is a good example of something that is very good early on. You have a quick administrative cap increase. So... It is good early on if you want to play an expansion game very quickly. Mega Corporation can definitely do that. Then you choose Private Prospectors. You also have the Private Colony Ship, which gives you another choice to build colony ships with another resource. So you have a quicker build of colony ships and you have a higher administrative cap. You can expand more quickly and you can exchange that for another Civic later on when you have some administrative cap through, for example, the unity trees or for, or through tech. So there's that. that. That gives you a head start. It could also be used for a time of uh, transformation of your empire when you need some administrative cap. Because administrative cap, if you go over it, then it will increase the cost of your empire. So this makes your empire very effective if it becomes big and bigger. And this goes well with other things, like, for example, franchising. So that there's definitely a synergy, for example, with franchising. If you open up a lot of branch offices, you will have a lot of the administrative cap use, the empire size will go up. If you use franchising and private prospectus, you can open up a big, big ton of branch offices without any problems. Then we have ruthless competition. That's a classic. <coughs> like your leader level cap goes up by one. Leader experience gain goes up by 10%. That's a no-brainer. If you want to play like an elite game, if you want to have an elite class of leaders, and that goes well with the indentured assets because you might have then some slaves and some leaders. You might have a very stratified society and that goes well. If you have slaves that have maybe in time another genetic setup that have no access to leadership posts, you can have also the ruthless competition going. Basically, for the elites, giving you a higher leader level cap and leader experience gain. So you have very powerful leaders and you have later on a kind of a slave class where you don't worry about uh, getting amenities and consumer goods, a lot of uh, them to them to um, satisfy them. Because they are slaves, they need a lot less of that. Then we have uh, trading posts. Starbase capacity goes up. Now, Starbase star bases are no longer only like defensive or, or income things they are also about trade trade increases when you have big cities on your planets 
when you have special uh, trade value in the systems and trading posts increasing the star base capacity basically make it so that you can have some more trade routes because with every trading post with every star base you can initiate uh, initiate a trading post which in the end will flow to your capital and the more star bases you have the more trade you can have this is also good at the start if you want to uh, play a trade based game it will give you a lot of income if you build star bases quickly if you want to expand quickly this is good to finance that with trade i mean there's a lot of things that synergize with that among that free traders and if you have good trading posts and good trading that is also a replacement for some things that have come new into the game like for consumer goods for amenities there is a lot of things you can uh, use your trade for also unity later on so you can split up the trade into an income of energy and something else and that's also the idea of that if, I, if you have a lot of trade you have a lot of power a lot of flexibility added that's the idea of trading posts so trading post is definitely good it goes into the direction of private prospectors just another way of expanding your mega corporation if you go into the into the way of trading or, and maybe a spatially large empire here that's another thing of these game transforming civics gospel of the masses this mega corporation embraces a curious blend of commercial and spiritualistic values the effects of that is spiritualist pops give additional trade value on all planets and branch offices so that won't synergize that well with the trading post on the other hand if you expand with that then it might as well give so what is so special about the gospel of the masses first that is something that will increase through a special temple of prosperity corporate building the spiritualists ethics attraction and this will increase your trade value even more so you have a religious based mega corporation activate that here the gospel of the masses that basically gives you a lot more trade and trade is very flexible you can use it for a lot of things and they will also be able to build that temple of prosperity corporate building in the branch offices of other empires basically making sure that they will become more spiritualist and by that you will add a positive relation to your empire now there's a lot of synergies for that of course with additional trade you will have a very high trade empire there because it's additional trade that it gets added then you can add some things like criminal heritage and then you can basically transform a lot of empires into more spiritualist empires that is really a crazy effect you have a lot of special buildings and you have that temple of prosperity and that will lead to basically steering the rest of the galaxy towards spiritualism and at the same time if you want so damaging them so that's a very curious combination for, for example other things also go well everything that has to do with trade goes with that and uh, spiritualist pops make for a good as you can see here unity based game and edict based game so you can look for unlocking the trees very quickly that give you the ascension perks and that can then lead 
to things like the Ecumenopolis quickly. Like that is the big, big, big city that will be trumping all the other cities in trade and other values. So we have the Gospel of the Masses. Now let's deselect that. We have the indentured assets. I already spoke about the indentured assets. They are good if you are, and they are only possible if you are authoritarian. So let's look at authoritarian. You have a worker output that is increased and your indentured assets, like the enslaved pops of 40% with a slave output plus 10% are usually also workers. You So you have a slave output of plus 10% and a worker output plus 10% you have slaves that make together plus 20% and that will be mostly the basic resources. You have other resources now like consumer goods, alloys and things but the basic resources like um, energy, like uh, minerals, like food will fuel will be fueled by your indentured assets and that 40% in slave pop ratio will make sure that you always have a solid backbone for these uh, if you would say so primitive resources now there's something special about that basically it's food production there's a new decision that boosts your growth and that uses a thousand food on a planet so that will go very well with these indentured assets. Then we have naval contractors going very well with uh, the private military companies as well as the media conglomerate again because war exhaustion gain goes down. It's about war. It's made basically better used later on or if naval contractors, if you want to hunt something early on like a dragon or something and you need more ships, then that can also be useful. But uh, if you go for a blitz, why not? But in general, these are very useful later on when you know who your opponent will be and when you will attack him and when you have time to prepare for that. I mean, if you want to go for a blitz, then they are probably useful early on, but it's usually better to plan this in Stellaris. So the naval contractors, what do they give you? They give you a flat 15% more naval capacity that is very useful and it is also not that easy to get anymore. You need to be some degree of militarist for that, which is totally understandable. So you have a military mega corporation that makes for a very, very interesting game, probably based on subsidiaries later on. So might go into the franchising thing. So you will have suppressed franchising. Then we have private military companies that gives you 20% more army damage and 20% less army upkeep. You might remember um, the, that corporation that was with the US when Iraq was invaded. Yeah, there were a lot of scandals around these and these were private military companies. That's something you will get, but it will be under the rule of a mega corporation. So. What that will give you is an easy way to invade more planets quickly and a better way to defend your planets if you want so. So here, that's all the civics of the mega corporations. Let's go back about the basics. You have a higher administrative cap and an empire size penalty, which means you have a big advantage early on for expansion, but you are capped later on. So the, your later expansion will mostly be fueled by the growth of planets where you have branch offices on, and basically by the growth of planets. You will have to rely on increasing the administrative cap a lot if you want to expand a lot. It, a mega corporation is at the start made to expand quickly because of the higher administrative cap, but in the long run it is made, in my opinion, mostly good to play a tall game. As much as that contradicts itself here. But later in the game, it's, 
it's possible to lift the administrative cap quickly and at the start you'll you'll basically get a boost and then you transform to another phase that is what what makes the mega corporation so interesting not only from a role play standpoint but also from a gameplay standpoint you can experiment with that you you will have different phases you have a quick expansion phase and then you come i'm sorry i'm a little i have a no, not a little cold i have a big cold i mean it's a mega corporation so i have a me i got a mega cold uh, just to start this off so we need a pharmaceutical corporation now for me uh, and now I, lo I lost track. So you have different phases in the Mega Corporation game. At the start, you can, if you want so, expand quickly into the width of space. You can claim a lot of systems and make a lot of gains like that. But you can also, through these new boosts and edicts that are available to you, already start to grow like two or three worlds that you pick very carefully very quickly and the rest of the empires or the rest of the systems you will leave to your subsidiary corporations so using franchising is definitely a good thing there because subsidiaries if you really want to expand your corporation then it will be done mostly via subsidiaries. I think the in general the Megacorp DLC is very fun because it it adds such a dynamic play with cooperation that is still there yet to explore. It's really fascinating what is possible with that and how it is limited. But um, in general it opens up tons of possibilities for role play and for challenges and for blitzes that are absolutely crazy so <laughs> if you if you want to play around more with megacorp or with stellaris in general then megacorp is i think a good investment the the general news about patch 2.2 is that the game has become at least on the surface it looks more complicated more complex but that is um not bad because you don't have to do ultra complex de decisions all the time you basically decide a direction and then you find the logical path for it or you find the beautiful path for it and then you follow that path maybe you have to think a few at a few spotlights you have to think very hard at least that's what i do on the highest difficulty and the other game that that is the flow so you have a, you have a few opportunities to to make your brain think which is always quite good and it's not like the the easy straightforward game for example of an imperial authority or even more even more limited like for a machine or a hive mind intelligence it is complicated kind of it has a lot of freedom it has a lot of opportunities and it is basically golden it's it's something that will not get old if you're into this kind of play style with different phases then I definitely recommend playing a mega corporation. That is a lot of fun. I mean, if you play a hive mind or maybe a machine empire, that is uh, the same principle all the time. If you play the normals, it is kind of dynamic. The corporate game, the mega corporation game, is very dynamic and very interesting. You have different phases, you have strategic de decisions. You can go into huge specializations. You can, you have new ways to basically debuff other empires, to bring them down or to bring them to your beliefs and to profit from them. 
So I hope you have profited from this video. It was a lot of fun for me, I hope also for you. Uh, have fun with your new mega corporation and please add some thoughts about synergies, about great builds, about um, the inspiring roleplay that you have. Will you play as the new Apple Peer Corporation selling computers? Will you, and that is also possible, build something that later on sells people? Or will you go for a super elite game that is ruled by corporate magnets with a ruthless competition? Will you build a church that sells their faith to the masses? Everything is open. Or have you historical examples for that? It would be very cool to know what you're going for, how you are venturing into space. So thank you for watching and thank you for your comments down below. Have a great time until next time and happy gaming. This is Immanuel Kahn signing out.